Hey there folks, welcome to Spectrum Pulse. We talk about music, movies, art, and culture. And today we're going to be talking about the newest album from Mount Moriah, finally, called How to Dance. So it's been a while since I've made any statements about how online publications cover country music. Mostly because after the bro country bubble burst, it's left to rather a fascinating aftermath. On the one hand, most of the mainstream remains tacitly ignored unless they're interesting, they've got some hype behind them, or it's a really slow reviews week. And really, you could say the exact same thing about the indie scene, which is a little bit exasperating for me, but it's kind of understandable. Read through the list of writers on Pitchfork or the AV Club that cover country music, and you'll see a short list of names indeed. And even then, they're going to go to the NPR approved higher profile indie names over anybody else which I suppose makes sense you got to maintain your indie cred and traffic figures somehow but it also means that there's gonna be a set sound of indie country acts that'll get critical examination and little else something so far to the fringe of folk or maybe even rock music that most straightforward indie country sites won't bother to cover these acts case in point Mount Mariah fronted by Heather McIntyre formerly of the post-punk group Bella Fee, joined up with guitarist Jenks Miller of Horseback a band known most like Panopticon for blending Americana with black metal. It's not at all surprising that most of the indie country scene pretty much ignored their self-titled debut and follow-up Miracle Temple, which were country-touched Americana drenched in the rougher folk rock tones. Oh, and both albums are excellent. Held up by some great hooks, thought-provoking writing, and Heather McIntyre's excellent and very expressive and subtle delivery. But it has been three years, and now Mount Mariah are back with reportedly their most outright country album to date. So everybody's out of excuses now to check this out. And while I'm a little bit late to the punch, it's not like anybody else has ever covered this band on YouTube, ever. So I dug into How to Dance. Did it live up to my expectations? Well, just for my luck and for the second time in two days, albeit for completely different reasons, I find myself wishing I liked this album a lot more than I do. Oh, don't get me wrong. How to Dance by Mount Mariah is very much pleasant and listenable and literate in the details and the songwriting. And yet in comparison with the darker, more straightforward writing that drove their first two albums, this record kind of fell flat for me. And it's one of those weirder cases where as the album got more literate and detailed, the more I felt distant from it. Even though deep down, I got the impression that it's probably one of their most personal releases to date. Dig into the writing, it really is. And even with that, I only got to that point after probably a dozen listens trying to make sense of this album, because it sure as hell not an easy nut to crack, and yet even with that, kind of underwhelmed at the end of the day. But let's start off with the most immediately accessible element of this album, and that's Heather McIntyre's vocals. And really, it's her quiet charisma and skill of bending together vocal melodies that will hold this album together. And there's a lot of little subtleties to her delivery that definitely show off how personal some of these songs are, even if it's not immediately clear what she's singing about, and she has great great vocal tone. Now there will be some who find her delivery a little bit restrained, not me, you can pick up the subtleties there, but my bigger issue comes in the production, and that there are points where she feels a little bit overwhelmed by her instrumentation, which is probably the most broad and dense that it's ever been. Rich, rough-edged guitar tones, prominent bass lines, a fair bit of organ, some sparse drums, hints of steel guitar and strings, and even some horns come in. Although, in the last case, I'd say to this record's detriment, because they really don't add much to tracks like Calvander or Cardinal Cross. What's more immediately apparent is that for as much as this album has been advertised as country, I'd hesitate to assign that label. Mostly due to very little acoustic instrumentation, where most of it comes in some of the texture added to the groove on Higher Mind, if anything. I remind a lot more of the roots rock of the 80s underground, or maybe the adult alternative scene of the 90s. As much as these guitars have some bite to them, they feel a little cleaner and more restrained in their tones than on, say, previous albums, which I gotta admit is a bit of a detriment. But look, I do see the advantage of it. Offer more melodic interplay between the guitars and bass, maybe adding some strings and organ to thicken the sound, but this is where I encounter my big issue with the instrumentation. A lot of the progressions really start to run together for me, mostly due to a serious lack of distinctive melodic hooks. Part of this is that Mount Mariah aren't really writing hook-driven songs. These tracks meander at their own pace, more focused on telling the story and atmosphere and subtle shifts than self-contained statements. But that doesn't really excuse how the instrumental textures don't really change up or evolve from song to song, and the very uniform tempo of this album doesn't really help matters. Now that's not saying these textures are bad. I like the rougher moments that crept through in the guitars on Baby Blue or Davis Square, especially on the solo of that song. And the title track is probably the one place where the strings really did a lot to anchor that melody. It's beautiful on that instrumental bridge. But again, individual songs can really fade into the background here. And it doesn't help matters, especially on the first half of this record, that songs can feel a little bit short. Most notably Presida and Cardinal Cross as fragments of ideas that don't really feel fleshed out all the way and don't really come together on their own. Okay, so what do all these ideas add up to in the lyrics and themes? Well, let me start by saying that even if you have the lyrics right in front of you, you're not going to understand this album the first 
eight to ten listens because the metaphors are layered and dense filled with references to classical mythology locations in their home state of north carolina and flora of all things i'm talking about flowers and plants the writing is almost overloaded with detail and symbolism working to establish such a vivid setting that you could feel like you lose some of the characters in between the lines now i'll come back to that most because when you do read between the lines there is a distinctive arc to this album notably how heather mcintyre deals with her own depression faltering faith in god and queer sexuality in the south and on that level it almost makes sense that this record never gets overt about these struggles most because they are very much internal but also because the environment she's in is not not particularly accepting of discussing them. So this record inevitably draws upon pagan imagery on tracks like Chiron, God and the Briar, or Cardinal Cross. Detours that I'd argue don't really connect particularly well, mostly because they feel like a bit like red herrings when you have songs instead like Fox in the City or Baby Blue or Higher Mind that hit a lot harder. Fox in the City in particular puts a great picture together, showing a woman McIntyre might have loved in the past falling into an unsatisfying domestic life that might not be representative of who she really is, and then it's revealed that it was all a ghost. More reflective of McIntyre's own insecurities about herself and her own progression. And this record gets the most emotional power when it cuts into that internal conflict, learning how to accept that God's not giving the answers on Baby Blue, or on Little Bear where she reconciles the truth about her child in order to break the nostalgia and rose-covered glasses, or when she finally lets that old love that haunted her from the past go on Davis Square, or the title track when she's finally claiming her own agency in the South. There is a potential conflict that runs through this record that's really quite powerful and potent, and yet I feel more distant from it than I really should because this record feels much more concerned with setting the scene and the place than the characters that live within it which is a real problem when the characters are actually the ones driving the drama and conflict to make me really care about this album so look as a whole man I wanted to like this a lot more because when you entangle this record there's real heart and power to it the problem is that the uniform instrumentation and production and the very pastoral writing style just doesn't do enough to accentuate it instead just wandering through at its own pace and I guess that's meta commentary on the album itself such journeys need to come at their own pace but the production of music doesn't do enough to make the atmosphere thick enough to really pull me in for more i'm not really enraptured by this so for me i'm giving it a very strong six out of ten but i will entirely get it if you find more to like here give it a listen if you're curious but for me how to dance doesn't really capture the power of mount mariah's first two albums so i guess i'll be staying on the wall Take that as it is. So yeah, thanks a lot for watching. If you'd like to like and subscribe, I'd be more than grateful. I got the poll up here, so what did you guys think about the album? Did you think that I'm totally off base? Did you guys manage to get something in the metaphors that I completely missed? I would totally buy it if you did, because this album is dense as hell. But beyond that, if there's anything else I might be able to do to improve my presentation, or any other albums coming out that you want me to take a look at, I will try to give them a listen. Till then, I'm Mark, you're watching Spectrum Pulse, and I'll see you next time.